So this is what we will get in the end of this video. For all the more experienced, here is the setup. I will explain to you. Come with me. This tutorial will be divided in three parts. One is to create this setup of the voxels and growing them according to the animation of the main sphere. Creating those dots, these connections, I mean. And third, about the rendering and coloring. Start with perf voxels, select the box. The box from now on you can hide. Let's add a shape. Select 3D and sphere. Display geometry. Any shape, we go to scale. 350, zero variation. And now in voxels, you can decrease or increase, depend of what you're looking for. Eight now looks okay for me. Since the box is rotating in this case, you can animate the box and the spheres stay there. So we need to make an object bind and select the box. So now it will follow the box. Hide again. Now let's make a surface test. To test for the main sphere here. I will change the color just to help visualize everything. Now with surface test, we select the pink moving sphere. And we're going to test where it goes, then the other particles will grow, will inflate. So for that, we need to create a new event. And you see that where it's moving is already changing to this new event, of course, because it's at two distance. It's not following. So for that, as you see, it's a mess. So we need to select bind object, press shift and drag to this new event and now it will follow. That's nice. Next, let's create a scale. So the idea is where this sphere is touching, it should grow. So we can set for proximity, multiply by proximity, select this sphere. You can press Alt X to see through the sphere. So we'll see if it's working as expected. And you should change here to absolute. Let's change some parameters. First of all, we need to set this to continuous. Timing continuous. And you see the icon change. Look. So I can read better type flow events. You can also right click here, timing, and you change. So it's continuous. Second parameter, how much you're going to multiply. So here I put 1000. Second parameter, let's create an interpolation 0 0.2. So it's more smooth the transition of growing. Third, I don't know why, but here when I put 65%, it returns to the original size. And not yet. Here the size, let's put 10 and 5, the proximity. So now yes. So the first effect is working. Now let's jump into the second part, where we create the lines connecting to this sphere. First create a birth object, pick the sphere, also create an object bind, and guess what, pick the sphere. The sphere itself we can hide because now we have the high flow sphere, right? 
and why we need it. We don't need to display for the rendering unless you want, but this is just to set up a particle group. Here we select a group, number one. I will make the same color just to make it easier to visualize. Now let's create a particle bind. You can set up show bindings just to visualize. This is not what we're looking for. We want each one of these connect to this sphere. So with the particle group number one, that's where we go. Here simulation group number one. Absolute, we change the distance, put a big number, but still not connecting because we need to set up these two time to continuous. Now you see it connected. But now it's just a binding, just visualize. We need to turn it into a shape. For that, we create a spline path, create new, and Although this looks cool, we want to particle bindings. That's the core of the, the second part. To set up nice transition in colors depend on the scale of your setup, of the spheres here in this case, you need to set up a gradient map. You can apply to any slot of your map, as I did here in metalness and reflection gloss but most important diffuse map and type flow will map this gradient accordingly to the scale or other properties so apply this to your type flow now looks strange but now we are going to map this for that first create a custom property Set it to continuous, so it's all the time reading exactly what the scale magnitude, and create a channel here, scale. Next is exactly the mapping. Here we're going to map from data, from custom float, and what data? scale as we just created now we select this both and copy here you normalize value and place the value that you want to work here I just delete and copy again this once you adjust this, don't forget that you need to set up the timing to continuous as well. I hope that you enjoy this, that you like. Subscribe, it helps me, so I keep creating this kind of information free for all. Thank you, see you next one.